A team from the National Institute of Mountaineering and Adventure Sports under the Ministry of Defence successfully scaled an unnamed and unclimbed peak in Arunachal Pradesh. They decided to name the summit after the 6th Dalai Lama, Sangsyang Gyotso, who was born in 1682 in the region of Montawang. The decision on the peak's name was meant as a tribute to his timeless wisdom and profound contributions to the Monpa community. This move has irked China no end. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jiang has branded the move as illegal and null and void. It has further gone on to claim Arunachal Pradesh as an integral part of China. China has played such games for years, renaming over 75 locations in Arunachal Pradesh. It's time now to call out Xi Jinping's hypocrisy and take the onus to tell the world that Arunachal Pradesh and Ladakh are integral parts of India and no country can have unequivocal uni unilateral control on it. Let's start our conversation on the telecast with me is Major General San Sanjay Meston. Thank you very much for joining us. And my first question, of course, the very act of this group of mountaineers who are part of the Ministry of Defense have decided to name this unconquered peak, this summit, uh, after the name of the Dalai Lama. Uh, there have been, as I said in the past, at least three instances since, nine to, since 2017 that China has deliberately tried to needle India by renaming a number of territories in Arunachal Pradesh, calling Arunachal Pradesh a part of China. How should our, uh, what should our next move be? How should we now hedge our bets in wake of this mirroring of uh, the kind of war tactic that was once utilized by China and now being replicated by India? Uh, Mega, good evening. Uh, very pertinent points raised by you. Uh, see, firstly, what India should do, uh, since many years, in fact, when I was commanding my brigade in Nathula, I remember uh, all the Chinese maps show Arunachal Pradesh as their territory. And obviously, on ground, the fact of the matter is, Arunachal has been, always will be an integral part of India. There is no denying on that fact. The Chinese can keep, uh, you know, st uh, staking any kind of claim and they can keep saying anything. I think we are very clear, it is our territory. Our people are deployed there, our politicians, our everyone visits there. Recently, our Prime Minister had visited, so it is our territory and uh, we should uh, continue on that. Yes, but now what sh should we do about it? One is, we just uh, don't react, let them keep uh, speaking. But sometimes I feel, you know, Chinese keep calling this short number of times. And I think this is a very trivial issue, a unnamed peak where mountaineers from mountain uh, the ministry of defense have uh, just scaled it at a height of about 20000 feet plus and we have just decided to name an un uh, unnamed peak in honor of the then dalai lama and i think there is nothing wrong why should chinese be reacting on it when it is our territory so the fact of the matter is these people keep reacting and i think sometimes i feel one is of course not doing anything the second option could be you know they always keep taking a claim on Tibet. Maybe it is high time. It's not an easy decision. We can start showing Tibet as an independent country. I think that is one of the options. It's, a, it's not an easy decision, but uh, the government of India has to take a call uh, because every time you see all their maps and uh, it's a total cartographic aggression. So it is only cartographic. On ground it is with us. So perhaps we can also do some kind of a cartographic aggression. We are not uh, doing aggression, but we are showing actually that Tibet Autonomous Region was an independent country uh, way back uh, before it was annexed by uh, this uh, PRC. So that is one of the options. We can do it. Otherwise, I feel let them keep uh, barking dogs. Uh, let them continue to bark. And I think we should not be even reacting on it. But that's also one of the options. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, uh, I also have with me Ambassador Goel. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And, and uh, let's understand from you your reaction. Now, uh, in wake of playing the 
diplomacy of aggression uh, is was this a right move made by india point a new word today diplomacy of aggression and i think we must take notes of in our own diplomatic annals about because our diplomats have never believed that there can be a diplomacy of aggression a diplomacy is only through peaceful talks and promoting peace really or solving the problem through conversations so i will i will take note of it uh, mega for future now and thank you now coming to the issue of renaming why is the name of a place so important to china uh we were just talking about this uh, before the show started the thing is that if you look at the entire issue of boundary between india and china and there are those white papers still in the uh, in the records of the ministry of external affairs the whole discussion negotiations was on the basis of traditions and history and traditions and history was where were the sheep where were the shepherds from where did they go to graze the sheep etc etc what was the name where were the informal structures for the revenue collection a huge number of things go back to that including what was the name traditional name for the place and for many places in arunachal pradesh you will find including in latta and uh, 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 galgalwan you will find that there are many places where chinese have names completely different from our names now i'm saying the completely different simply because in chinese language they would have a set other name for any other names like delhi new delhi is called sin valley because they don't have the name for new new is sin and delhi is transliteration from delhi therefore one has to see what does the name renaming mean is it simply tra- chinese transliteration of a name or this has a trad- purpose of exercising traditional rights over that place now in most of the cases in uh, arunachal pradesh when they were saying we are saying renaming the place in some cases they were renaming in some cases no names had contributed from history and we have always this we have disputed them they were basically connotation of traditional practices and the chinese because even from 1962 onwards always they claim arunachal pradesh as part of the chinese territory they will never go back on that till there is a solution to the boundary problem i'm saying that calmly even though we may, we are not happy about it we have always disputed it and like uh, uh, as the uh, master said our people are there our people are there to defend the uh, border and the loc so they will be there and chinese have gone beyond the uh, our border in 1962 after they crossed the border really so the point in really here is the chinese have always disputed it they will continue to dispute it so be it. and we will basically continue to talk about it the issue here is the peak are they unhappy about our scaling the peak or are they unhappy about calling the peak now the difference is important if they are not unhappy about scaling the peak that means they are admitting that we are in control of the peak otherwise we can't scale it so they are admitting our control over the area because we had been able to scale it but they are unhappy about calling it because it's a tradition practice we must keep that that in there that 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 in mind as a different anyway to come to the last point here how many they will they will they will make a protest let them lodge a protest but we know what our position is we have to maintain our position in all our negotiations in all our correspondence and wherever we come across with the chinese to talk on these issues we have to maintain our sovereignty over the area in all discussions that's the only way to go about it okay okay, okay all right professor madan alapad the same question like like you know mirror, mirroring the wo- wolf warrior diplomacy uh, uh, that was uh, you know the word that was coined by the chinese uh, will that serve the purpose in tackling an enemy such as china mega i'd like to say very clearly that Uh, in my view this is not something that uh, we can take lightly for the simple reason that even on english language maps they use the chinese name i can understand the point made by the learned ambassador 
where the Chinese language is concerned because it's a, uh, it's a different kind of language structure. And yes, they have problems in pronunciation of some names, just as we also do. But in, even in English language maps that they distribute all over the world, and in fact, some of them are showcased even in some locations in India, where you, if you invite a Chinese diplomat, he will bring Chinese maps in the English language. The same Chinese names are used in those maps as well. So I think it's a serious issue and it needs to be taken seriously. There's no question about that. And I'd also like to say so far as Tibet is concerned, well, the fact is the Chinese and Tibetan are two different cultures. They're two different streams of thought, entirely different, you know, and you have a lot of Chinese now coming to Tibet and learning from Tibetan masters. But the problem is that Tibet, the entire culture of Tibet has now been affected by, by the Sinicization there. Tibetan school children are being taught in, in Mandarin. They're not being taught Tibetan anymore. Uh, they're not encouraged to wear Tibetan dress or take or, or sing Tibetan songs or resort to Tibetan language. This is a forced kind of sinicization that's taking place. That's very concerning. And yes, I think not only India, but other countries as well. And we can make a start by suggesting this in the Quad. The Quad countries can, can basically go ahead with going and sticking to the original Tibetan names and basically calling for the protection of Tibetan culture, Tibetan language, and Tibetan heritage in Tibet. There's no question that that needs to be done, Mega. Okay. Uh, let me also get in Dr. Monica Verma. And what are your views with regards to how we should take this concentration forward? Like I said, in the past three instances since 2017, there have been three times already that China has renamed territories in Arunachal Pradesh, which we have taken offense to. Uh, there was just a few months ago another report that came in that India is going to be renaming 30 of these territories in different parts where China at this point of time seeks to hold or at least claims to hold control of. Uh, uh, does this send out a loud and clear message to China and, rather, and the rest of the world? Yes, of course, Megha. I see it as a damage control exercise because, you know, if you look at the post-independence history of India, uh, we had inherited privileged rights in Tibet. So, in fact, you know, there was a time in history when Tibet was well connected to the Indian territory. In fact, the Chinese themselves were dependent on Indian, uh, uh, you know, territory to get an access into Tibet. But all those privileges were given on a plate by our leaders to China. And, you know, it, it didn't happen just once. Uh, I, I uh, refer to some archival material, you know, I read uh, Prime Minister Nehru's speeches. He was driven by an idealist foreign policy and he said, you know, that if we give Tibet uh, to China, if we recognize uh, China's sovereignty in Tibet, in that way, you know, it will be sending a good, nice message to the entire world that to a post uh, colonial country, China was not uh, hard colonized, it was soft colonized uh, by the British to the opium wars and all. But let's not get there. Despite, you know, uh, recognizing that India had a lot of privileges in Tibet, Prime Minister Nehru gave all those privileges up just to send a message against imperialism to the world. And, you know, when you are doing that kind of a trade-off, when you are not taking care of your own country's national interests, but you are sending a message of peace and stability and, you know, seeking a friendship uh, or a cooperative relationship with China, obviously you are going to do a lot of damage in the long run. And that is exactly okay. what happened what happened in the Arunachal issue. When we recognized uh, China's sovereignty in Tibet so easily, something that was also repeated in 2003, when Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, he went to uh, China and there was a, I'm not sure about the visit that much, but there was an agreement, uh, 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 basically an exchange of you know legitimacy that India extended to Tibet and China extended to Sikkim. 30 years after Sikkim was integrated with India, they gave that recognition. So I think, you know, when repeatedly Indian leaders go and they, they make such statements, they make such concessions, then obviously a country like China will feel emboldened to claim more and more territory. Okay. So what happened in Tibet is, is an extension of what's happening in Arunachal today. Okay, do you really think so? Uh, Major General Sanjay Mestin, because we did not, uh, we did not protect the integrity and sovereignty of Tibet and therefore uh, we are bearing the brunt of what China at this point of time is doing in Ladakh and also the Arunachal territory? Uh, see, whatever has happened then, that is the history now. 
I do not know what were the compulsions of those leaders then to, uh, you know, give uh, Tibet uh, and uh, start uh, showing the jurisdiction of China in total control. Yes, uh, in hindsight, uh, one feels that it was definitely an incorrect move. And whatever we give China, uh, China on platter, they are always going to be one step ahead of us because they always want to claim that they are a major power here in uh, this part of the continent. I think India needs to be more tough now in everything. Uh, whether it is Ladakh side, whether it is Arunachal side, we need to be tough. And sometimes even uh, we had just uh, done a program recently on Myanmar uh, and of course Manipur. Again, the whole problem is, you know, because of uh, internal issues, the Chinese is going to take advantage and they are not uh, funding, uh, you know, the uh, militants in uh, Manipur. So we have to be very, very clear as a nation that our Indian sovereignty will shall and will not be compromised under any circumstances. Uh, another important aspect is all the neighboring countries today are somehow, even if you see the recent uh, results of uh, elections in Sri Lanka, you know, things are changing a little bit. And even Bhutan, where uh, we have, uh, we actually are in control of their foreign policy. And of course, there are certain issues on defense, which I would not, not like to highlight. But the fact of the matter is today, even China is pressurizing uh, in Bhutan. Of course, Nepal, they are doing. So our policies with especially these two countries has to be more, uh, I would not use the word aggressive. It has to be more proactive because China is trying to make inroads and these, uh, China is the only, uh, China has not resolved borders uh, with India and Bhutan. It's resolved with all other countries. So the intent is very clear. They will continue to do this pin pricks with us and the fact of the matter is now since we are part of Quad and recently in the recent uh, Quad uh, declaration, I think it was clearly stated Quad on sea and Chinese feel that uh, we are going to contain them as part of Quad and it states clearly the ship's uh, observer mission will be established uh, basically for interoperability between the Quad uh, nations. Logistics. Okay. So these kind of things, uh, I think the Quad countries uh, need to pressurize and uh, we need to start uh, reviving the Tibet issue again. The okay. Tibet, the, uh, the, uh, the Tibet people as a race, they are being just finished off. So I definitely feel that we need to be little proactive. You know, everyone has to be paid in their point. If they are doing something, why can't we be doing? And we have the wherewithal. Okay. We have the will. Uh, we have to be little proactive with our two neighbors on the north, especially I would say Nepal uh, and uh, Bhutan, and also to the extent of. Uh, uh, you know, Myanmar. So it's very, very important. And even, I do not know, since I was in Afghanistan, I recollect Chinese is making a lot of inroads there uh, through that Wakhan corridor. Uh, there's a pass, uh, a huge pass over there. Uh, I think it is, uh, uh, forget the name of the pass. It's about 18,000 feet. The Chinese are making inroads even in Afghanistan. They are making a proper road there in Wakhan corridor, uh, inhospitable terrain. So, China is trying to make inroads, of course, it is going with the BRI initiative. We have to also now start thinking of a strategy where we have to counter everything Chinese in a very, very resolute manner. Okay. And not we have caught with us. So okay. let's take advantage okay. of All right. Uh, Master Suresh Goyal, uh, what are your views on this? Uh, also, on the other end, when we take a look at the line of actual control and there has been some consensus that has been built. Uh, and in a positive light where there has been disengagement that has happened to a larger extent and now the move towards de-escalation. Now, in wake of that situation slowly coming under control of India, there you have an Arunachal issue. Is it just, is it just at this point of time, you know, poking each other while on the other end we have our trade ties that are resilient with China and of course a situation that is uh, at the brink of normalization when it comes to line of actual control? Neha, let us it. I mean, I'm not going to be talking about the details of our boundary dispute with China uh, on this forum. There are so many details and uh, not everything really can be discussed in a public forum. But uh, we all know that there is a boundary dispute between India and China. And what we had in Ladakh was that when we really talked about the areas which could be patrolled by both the sides uh, with information to each other and there were agreements on CBMs and there were, agree there were understandings on how to maintain peace and tranquility along the border. All this is a long history uh, ever since visit of uh, then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi to China in uh, 1988. Uh, 
we it, it happened at that time it refer, since then uh, uh, there are a lot of progress but the fact is we know and everybody knows that there is a dispute over the boundary we have been hoping to be able to resolve that boundary dispute through negotiations etc etc until uh, the till uh, the galwan valley happened in uh, 2021 Uh, we we were hoping that by development of ties in the very areas, we will be able to create conditions, uh, favorable conditions, to come to an understanding of the boundary. It didn't happen. It is it has become actually a reality again. Therefore, let us face it that there is a boundary dispute. We will have to negotiate about this thing. In the meantime, we are talking about keeping uh, as far as possible uh, the situation yeah. yes. stable. It has the, it has happened. It has not happened, so it is going to be in that manner. But important thing is, as I said before, we must maintain our claim as we have on the territories, even which are claimed by China, which are matters of dispute, and areas in Arunachal Pradesh simply because of the common origin Buddhism, Tawang particularly being the birthplace of Dalai Lama, etc., are important uh, for us. Are important for us politically. Are important as for our territorial integrity. We should negotiate. We should maintain our claim. That's all I would say. Okay, uh, Professor Nalapan. Uh, again, your views, particularly with regards to these territorial wars, the nomenclature games that are being played out, perhaps far too often. Uh, does this really impact in any way uh, the India-China relations? And also, you know, a very uh, interesting statement that was made by. Uh, our external affairs minister S J Shankar uh, just a couple of days ago talking about uh, how India and China are integral to the growth of global south, and uh, uh, is this is this at this point of time if you want I mean both both China and India will have to survive and they will have to exist parallelly in the same in 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 the same ecosystem. Uh, and 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 if you are at this point of time in strife with the other. It's going to make things difficult for you to exist. Yeah, Mega, I'd like to point out there is no dispute. If you go to the Chinese side, they don't agree that there is a dispute. They say it's our territory. For us, why do we say it's a dispute? There is no dispute. We have no dispute whatsoever. It's our territory, and you you have no claim on it. And those parts that you are inhabiting, please get out of it. So I think we should be very firm on our stand. We don't recognize the dispute, and the Chinese. Uh, they don't recognize the dispute either. They say it's our land. They they don't want to talk. What they're saying is surrender, they give back uh, our so-called our land, which is nonsense. It's our land. So I think there's no dispute. And the second fact is we have an India-Tibet border, and I think the Quad countries on their maps should start now reflecting that the bo- border is India-Tibet and show Tibet and Xinjiang separately from what is actually China. I think that's important, Mega, and the sooner it's done, the better. Thank you, Mega, for this opportunity. Okay, uh, Dr. Monica Verma, your views uh, taking forward uh, India and China ties uh, can they exist parallelly while you have your trade association uh, that is growing? On the other hand, you have these territorial issues that you continue to fight. I'm not being a war monger here. Uh, someone, you know, as a young person who believes in peace and prosperity and stability in the world, I, I totally believe that there, it is one reality that we cannot wish away anymore. That uh, China has grown. We have a legit power gap with it, and we have existed as fellow civilizations for so long. Uh, but at that time when we were fellow civilizations, we were not uh, immediate neighbors. The annexation of Tibet has changed that reality, and today the the kind okay. of boundary dispute that we have is because of that. Um, an extension of tibet only but then you know ultimately my only point is that fine we need to have some sort of stability between india and china something that was brought by the 1993 agreement as well peace and tranquility agreement but when it comes to china my suspicions remain because they signed all these boundary uh, all these border agreements but they are the ones who violated in fact their claim on arunachal is also in violation of uh, article 7 uh, of the 2005 border agreement where they had clearly said that you know we are becoming uh, we uh, we are never going to claim territories which have settled populations so interests of both countries will be protected at a time of border uh, resolution uh, where the uh, where in both territories where already there are settled populations 
and then uh, you know when prime minister manmohan singh wanted to visit arunachal in fact visited arunachal for some state elections and then there was an ias officer who was going to arunachal for some work uh, china to for some work and he belonged to arunachal and china did not give him visa so you know china is a country which cannot be trusted when it comes to border issues if they can do it to their so called no limit partner russia they have been using the same tactic with russia as well this is not often discussed in indian media but we need to recognize the same behavior that china does with india is it's also doing with russia okay. uh, on the border area with russia so many places have been renamed into chinese places so i think you know uh, good we, we need to echo exist and all that uh, you know uh, peace and uh, liberal paradigm but then at the same time we need we need to watch our interest for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon